Hey people, this is the Broken Puppet, got another video for you today, and a competition. And uh, the video is how to draw a queer fish, tattoo style. It's pretty decent, I talk you through step by step everything you need to know, and out of how to draw a nice good queer fish. And at uh, the competition, there's a chance to win a shout out in my next video. I'm going to do a shout out to four people, so there's four winners for this. And uh, basically I'm going to have your channel come up, little links, advertise who you are, and then hopefully that gets you some subscribers, you know, a whole bunch more views. And that to enter, all you gotta do is subscribe, drop a comment below, or a video response, or send me a message with a video you think's worthy of going up. And that uh, the four people I like most will go into this week, and I'll be doing this each time I do a video. So pretty much every week I'm gonna be doing this. And that so it doesn't matter if you're seeing this before this competition's up or afterwards, enter and you stand a chance of getting the next video I do. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that, and up below, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Voila. Right, people, clear fish tutorial. And that today I'm going to teach you what I call an S-shape clear fish. And now the reason I call it an S-shape is that's because the way the body bends. It's going to bend like this, this way, and flick off this side. Generally, clear fish always have a bit of a bend. And that, you know, you can do them fairly straight, you know, sort of like, you know, head up here, the tail on this side, or curving this way. And that, but generally, most of them like either a C, uh, C shape, so imagine like that. You know, like a J shape where the head's up here, goes down to the tail. Or they're what we're going to do today, which I, it's my kind of favourite, and that's the S shape. So it's going to go like this. Could do it the other way, but we're going to do it this way. And that easiest way, so if you basically just plot out your S shape, start up say top corner, just quick swirl line like that. And that, hopefully, you can see this is a quite a faint pencil, but this is just basically to get a basic shape. This is going to solve a lot of your problems if you tried doing this before. Most people make one or two mistakes they do the head either way too big and the body too small, or they do the head way too small. And the body, way too bloody big. I'm going to show you roughly what I feel is the right size for this. And that. You want the head shape. If you imagine like, um, how can we call this sort of shape? Because it isn't circular. Well, say if you start off with a circle. Or more like an oval shape. And that then sort of, you know, like a little line bit across here where the sort of mouth would curl. So you cut off a line there come down the sides. Now you want this mouth bit to be smaller than the width of the face and that so if we say here this curls up so we have to round this size and now the size the head is at the end you want it to get a little bit wider as it gets towards the upper part of the, of the middle section of the body as it gets towards the tail it's going to shrink a little bit not to a point a lot of people make the mistake of making this go straight to a point you know, it looks okay if you're doing like a certain sort of angle of it but generally it just looks way too skinny so yeah, so you see here this is a bit darker so you can see I'm going to start here go here now like I said, to make this bit here this gap wider see, it goes up wider then we're going to come and be a bit skinny as it comes here, you see not too skinny that's a little bit skinnier than what this section here is and that, where the S shape was and that you know sometimes like here it's like it's in the right place but sometimes it isn't and that's so if you start say where the queer fish is if you imagine where the uh, you can start in the middle if you want but I'd always say go a little bit further to the side than the middle and actually imagine they're going to have an eye here in this section of the face it's going to be kind of an angle and that's so the midpoint of the fish would actually be a bit higher up and this is where we're going to do it's like kind of a fin and that's so we say here drag your ass like this going down, following the same kind of shape but sticking to the middle, when you get to this bit you want to swirl off and go to the side right, so it joins up to this side over here, you see this nice curve gives a nice shape to the body and then that's where we're going to put the fin then we're going to put two circles on the side now if you imagine this is where the face ends, see where this line is 
And now we're going to start our circles just here on the side. This is where you know side fins are going to be. So if we say like a little circle shape like that, and one this side. Now this one's optional, but I like to put it in because it's a nice little bit of detail and just makes it a bit more interesting. Two little ones just here. One bit further down here. One bit further there. And that. And now where the tail ends, we're going to quickly just sort of plot in a rough idea for where the tail is going to go. Now, where the lines are, you want to curve outwards from that line. See here, this curves here, we're going to curve out a little bit. So if we curve out, for this line, and just make just a nice fancy curl. You can do it any how you want, but make sure you go a nice little bit of distance. You don't want this tail bit being too small, you want a nice sized tail. And that. then we're going to go another bit here, I'm just going to flip this bit up here. And just like do like a sort of semicircle, just join up that little gap there. Now this is all basic, you just like you know getting it in proportion. And that if you want at this point, if you wanted to do something kind of background, like you could have waves coming up here overlapping a little bit, now probably be the best time to plot that in. But I'm just teaching you the koi fish for now. You know, I'll show you some other designs afterwards with like you know flowers and like water bits and how you can make it look. But basic koi fish first. Alright, so now we've got the basic shape, we're going to plot in the face. Now like I said, you know, this area just here. Now, so if you imagine we've got the, you know, this shape of the face, and that where we've got this point for the mouth, just take a line from where the mouth bit is, come back and curl it to about halfway between that line bit. And now what that's going to be, this is going to be your basis for where you're going to put the eye. You know, once you get used to it, you won't have to do this. But this is just a good way if you're sort of not too sure where to put it. So if you imagine that center point now is going to be like the middle bit of the eye. So do a circle, roughly in about the middle section, a little bit further back. You don't want to go too close to the mouth. You want a nice little bit of distance to the mouth. So say so we've got a circle, do a little circle in the middle bit, and that, and that's roughly where the eye is going to go. Now a lot of Tattooers, you know, sort of tattoo the eye like circular, but I prefer to put a little bit more personality and putting like a little kind of, I won't say eyebrow, but kind of a little overlap of skin over the eye. Just gives it a bit more sort of personality. So if you start from where that line is, curve up, go a little bit higher, that you know, just through the eye, through that top section, and curve back down here, and maybe just bring that curve over there. Do the same thing from the bottom if you want. In here, the rest of the face is really just playing about with little bits you want, but you can play about with different key sections, right? So you've got the eye. Another key section is going to be the uh, what you call them, the uh, gills. Just here, you're going to have a gill coming off this bit. So if you imagine where the eye is, if you imagine like a big circle bit going around the eye, and you want to curve off on this bit. So this gill kind of goes up and a little bit further higher than the eye. I generally like to put two. You know, you can put three, four, and you can put really kind of mad patterns in this. You could have like a bigger gap and do like a you know, zigzag or, you know, sort of circular shape bits and have like fancy shading coming off of that. But start off with this and afterwards just experiment with other bits. The other bits uh, by the mouth. Now the mouth, you know, you've got this section here at the top and you're going to have the little uh, parts that come off here. And that now generally I prefer to put two either side. And that, so if you start here, and you're going to make a little sort of string of it come off, curve up. Now you can be any kind of curve you want, just do a nice little fancy curve. You can go a really long one or a really small one. I generally prefer to go about the size you're going to see here. And just bring that back. And that going a little bit wider as it gets to the bottom, so you've only got like a little sort of wide bit. Then again, I'm going to bring out a second one. Going over here. Now that's it, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just put in a nice sort of fancy swirl, come back a little bit wider, and join that up. And then the mouth, I like to put like a nice sort of flat curve for the mouth on the edge, and then bring like a few little lines going further in, just a little bit of detail. Now you can put like a little sort of, imagine like a little kind of nostril, even though they don't have nostrils, just a nice little detail bit. Just bringing that off of there. 
the centre line of the heads. You know, you can really kind of play with the detail here. So if you imagine another little gill bit here, I'm going to bring this line to sort of shape off the heads. Now where this line is, I'm going to bring like a V into this point. A little line going down towards the mouth. And then a couple of little Vs on the inside. Now these little details are what makes it your koi fish. And now these little sort of details and little shapes. I mean you can do sort of circles, you can do like wiggly lines here. But you generally want to follow that shape of the face going through it. At the bottom here I'm going to put a little detail like when you come off the gill. Bring off like another circle bit. And then go a little bit higher and kind of curve down over it. And back. Just a little bit of nice detail. You know. And then I'm going to bring off the uh, fin I told you about. The big fin in the centre. So if you come down say a little bit. So you start off about here. Bring this line quite wide. Bring this. Then what you want to do is you want to go here. Then overlap your S line that was going through the middle. Come up wide again. And then join up at the end. And that would and be your mid fin bit. Bring this round. Do that. Right. For the fin bits on the side, you can do a number of ways, and that you could just sort of shape this off and do like a number of straight lines. Come off of here. You could have this bit going here, a couple of straight lines coming off of here. For this one, I'm going to do what I like to. It's kind of like an overlap, kind of thing. So uh, I'll show you what I mean. Bring this out. Bring it back like a big sausage sort of shape. In that, they bring like another one underneath and join back up. Each time you want this gap here to get a little bit smaller. And what this will do, this will just curve the fin. As you can see. There we go. That's one side. Then you do that on the same other side. So. At this point, when you're doing with pencil, you can just be as sketchy as you want. And that, when you get to the edge, just circle that back around. I like to put like a new, another circle bit going around the outside. It just rather than just bringing it to a dead stop, you know, it just gives a little bit more detail. Just bring a couple of circle bits. See there, there, and that. All right. And then uh, for the fin uh, on the S line bit here, just bring out straight lines. Just flick, 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 flick. All the way around. Again, you can play about with this. You can put like, jagged the edges or do the same kind of thing with the fins going up. You know, like the sausage and sort of coming off of it. But yeah, doing just the sort of straight lines coming off it is a really nice, good, clean look to it at the end. And that the way we've done this is going to be the same, similar way we're going to do the fin. I mean the tail. And that, but on the tail, on this semicircle bit, we're going to do this style, so if you imagine here, curl down, bring that, but you're going to similarise with this because you're going to bring this to a flick and then an end. See? That's all curve and just flick. Curve, flick, curve, flick. And bring it around that side. And just join up in the middle. Yeah. And that's your basic shape for it. At this point I'm going to quickly outline with a pen. So, back in two seconds. Right, as you can see, that's the outline. It's starting to get there now. You see it taking shape. Pretty cool. Here's a bit I know pretty much everyone struggles with, and that the scales. Now, I think the main reason people struggle when it comes to scales is because they change them up too much and that when you do a scale you want to try to keep that scale the same kind of width and sort of depth throughout the whole thing and another bit is also the placement people kind of get lost on where to place it now you've got two ways of doing this two very very simple ways of laying it out most of what the most favourite which most terrorists do is the uh, cross design 
go down it, doing lines one way, then go down it, doing lines the other way. And what this does, each little gap gives you an idea of roughly how to do each scale. That's one way of doing it. The way I like doing it is like this. Draw the lines going the way you want to scale. So I want to scale here to fit this middle bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring a line down exactly where I want this scale line to go. See, it's going to go here. And this scale line is going to follow the fin in the middle. See, so it's going to come around here. It's going to finish there. So this is going to be like one set of scale. I'm going to do another line. Trying to keep the distance about the same. Going there. On about there. Then this one coming up around here. To there. And now what these lines show me is exactly where I want to put mine. And now what you want to do here is put a line through the middle of each bit. It's where the second one's going to connect up. I'll show you what I mean. So if we do this, through there, through there, through there, through there, then there. So we're going to start off with this one scale first here. So I'm going to do this straight in pen so you can see a bit better, so you can see what I'm doing. And that. So you see scale one. Now I'm doing pretty wide scale, so you can do this a lot thinner. You could do sort of, you know, one a lot more kind of curved and roundish. And that, but just remember, whatever scale you do first is when you want to try and continue the whole way through it. And that, remember, they're going lines. And that's so now I've done this one. The second one, which is going to connect up to that line in the middle. You see where it's got the center piece. So I'm going to bring this here, around here, connecting up on that point. You see. And then we're going to bring this out. That's going to finish up on that second line. You see a little bit there. Then just bring that little curve bit off. And then you just continue doing that the whole way down it. And now if you're worried about trying to curve it, what you could do is have this fin, as it curls here, cut off this edge here. Then what you do is have these scales just go in one direction, and then when it comes on here, where it doesn't connect, have the scales just go in another direction. It's a lot easier than trying to curl the whole way around, but it's worth it if you can do it. So, like I said, bring that round to that middle line. Bring that round to that line. So you see how these two scales are going to follow that same line all the way around. And that. Now you've got the idea, I'm just going to fast forward through this. You can see what I'm doing as it goes. As you can see, that's the scales done. And that, if you're having trouble turning the scales, like if you're sort of getting too much stuck at one angle, and that, what you want to do, like say here, we got this curve, had the scales a little bit thinner, and slowly get them a little bit thicker as you get to the outside. And when you get to that last one, make it a nice big curl. And what that'll do, that'll help you turn your next one a bit wider and going smaller. So it will help turn the scales. And that. And like you see here, you see the way these scales go here? See with this other curve of the body? And then this curve of the body there, so it's sort of very different to the top ones. This is very good to show that different direction of change in the body. You can have this kind of the exact same. How it changing? Perfect. So personally, I prefer it changing. And that, because you get a sense of like, you know, the sort of shape of the body. Because it isn't perfectly round, the, you know, a koi fish. It's kind of sort of triangular. So you can imagine when you've got a thinner bit at the top, then this bit of the body kind of curves like this. And then this bit, off this side so you get an uneven shape this really shows that I left the eye empty because I'm going to show you a little bit of eye detail now, do the pencil now you've got the big circle bit you could leave it like this you could just shade it in for like a blank white eye personally I prefer to put like you know you've got the, pupil, the uh, uh, sorry I'm losing my words here you've got the pupil in the center and around the outside you put like the highlights and the easy way of doing highlights I'll teach you just a really basic one put a circle up in the corner here about the same size as the pupil 
Right, I'll do this in pen actually so you can see. See, you've got a circle there. Now that's not the pupil, that's the highlight. And next to that, in the center, you want like a line going down. So if I show you sort of a pie so you can see, you want a line going down, then kind of curving off in like a swirly motion to the side. Not all the way to the end of the eye. And when you get to the end, you get a little flick up. So like this. Like that. And then bring your pupil around the outside of it. And then simply colour the pupil in black. Well that will do, now it gives you basic little highlights to the sides. When you colour it in the shade, you want like a little dark shade coming down from the top. But sort of fading into the white section on that. And just overlapping the top corner of this. With like a little shadow underneath. You'll see in the finished product how it looks. But... Come in. Yeah. Just rub out all the uh, pencil marks. Then we're good to move on to the next bit. And we're going to colour this one in colour. But if you're too worried to go into colour, you could always do black and white. Always looks pretty cool. But if you're doing black and white, you want the scales to be very dark and the face to have like a nice dark, you know, sort of look to it, not too light. If it's too light, it doesn't look as good. It can do, under certain, certain circumstances, with certain designs. Like if you've got a really dark background, then you want to face it a little bit lighter. But this one's fairly light. So for this one, what colors are we going to do this? Say orange, dark orange, yellow, maybe a touch of red. Where the hell is my black gun? Where are you black? There you are. Right. To start with, I'm going to put in some black. Now this, I can. I mean you can copy how I've done this, but to be honest, this is just really random. And the more random, the better it looks. And that, a lot of koi fish have like a little sort of black spotted kind of dot look on them. And that, uh, you'll see how I'm going to do this. This one I'm just going to put black into this scale. Leaving like that white edge from the line. So I'm only going so close. I'm going to do that for every scale. I'm not going to go up to the black line. I'm going to leave a little white edge. And that black here. I'm going to come off halfway. Do like a zigzaggy bit. <coughs> like a black dot, black dot. If you imagine like cow skin, you know the way cows got black dots and patches, or like a dog, you're just gonna want to do that on it and just randomize it up going throughout it. Just like little patches, little sections. This one I'm gonna colour in black. Right, that's my basic black pen. I know it looks a bit random, but you're going to see when it's the uh, colour goes in. It'll be awesome. Right, now I'm going to go for the orange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the darker shade going from the edge, going lighter towards the centre. And then the same on this side, dark, going lighter. I'm going to go from like orange into yellow, and I'm going to put like a bit of darker orange just on the edge. And that following the same rule. 
and that you know I'm not going to go right to the edge so if I show you on this one see left that white highlight at the bottom now it's quite self-explanatory so I'm just going to basically do that and each time I get here just going to sort of flick shade it out I'll stop after each colour so you see what I'm doing right so you see like you know how I sort of stop the just sort of flicked out the shading for the orange and then I'm going to do the same thing with yellow going towards the inside You can see that's the yellow put in now. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of that darker orange on the outside to make it a little bit more 3D. I also put a little shadow just under there. You see with that dark orange under the thin bit and just a little bit on there. I'm just going to colour this little bit, you know, on the inner arm bit red. Them just two little white highlight bits in it. And then for the uh, fins, the middle fin, these bits, and the tail, I'm going to do a combination of yeah, red and orange. I'm going to have like red flicking out into orange. That's the body done. Now we go on to the face. The face people find people generally find it a, a lot harder to colour in than the body. The body is fairly basic, you know, just sort of flick shading outwards, like flick shading out on like the fins. It's very simple. The face can get a little bit more complicated. You can bold it in if you want. They're similar to these bits, but I'm going to show you how I like to do the face. Now, there's a bunch of different like, detail bits. We're going to go in with like the orange first and do like the bolder bits which sort of stand out 3D. These are the bits which don't really have a line. So if you look carefully, I'm going to do this. So you see on the uh, eyebrow part here, I'm going to do a line halfway through it. And then the underside bit. This is kind of like a shadow. You know, those who have done like, you know, portraits and stuff will find this a bit easier to work out. The others, you'll get it with practice, don't worry about that. So if you imagine, the light's coming down from this side, so this orange is like the darker bit, which is going to be underneath. And that. Then we're going to do like another section here, on the fin. Going around. Now for this bit, we're not going to touch the edge. Again, like a little white line. And you're going to flick up pretty high on this bit. You want quite a lot of dark coverage. Because again, this is like the under bit of shadow. Get that orange up. There's a line just underneath the eye. And there's little gaps in between the eye and the skin. We're going to follow this around the same thing on the bottom bit. So a little gap along the edge, flick shade up, to the edge, flick shade up, 
do the same thing around here. All the way to the top for that thin bit. Now see where we've got these uh, V shapes? On the inside of the V, flick a line out, flick a line out. The next one, flick a line out, flick a line out. Now you just want to leave a little gap in between that, each one, so you kind of got that line. Then on this line, up to the line, because this bit overlaps, flick out there, just flick up a little bit. Not touching the line, come down, just a little bit there. Getting on the lip, not touching the line, just flicking upwards. So we're basically just building up a nice little sort of dark shadow area. It's not overly dark, it's orange, but do you want to use the darker part of the fish? Again, just flicking up here. And that. And then just along this edge. We're going to put a shadow along this edge, up here, but it's going to be very small compared to this side. I'm going to literally just like a little line, then just like a couple little flicks off of that line. Put a few orange circles around just for a little bit of detail. Kind of like a black spot, just goes a little bit of detail to the face. Now I'll go over the rest of the face, except for the eye in the yellow. See? Then I'm just going to use that brown. That sort of darker orange brownish colour, and just put that shadow right across the bottom. If you want, you can do this before you do the orange. I always prefer to do it afterwards and just kind of blend it out. I tend to find dark colours blend out a lot easier if you put the lighter version underneath first. Go over the top, and then put a the lighter colour over the top again. Just kind of builds up your layers. Yeah, I'm just putting those shadows under the gills. And then I put one just underneath here. Going over these scales. I'm going to orange, just go over the top, blend it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. I can be any colour you want it to be. Generally you got your I'd say go for a colour that 
contrast the skin. So let's say like a blue, green or something like that. For this I'm going to go for a blue and a green. So bring like the blue around the edge. Look it in. Remember I'm not going over those white highlights. But I am going just above them. A little bit of that in there. Bit of green. A bit of a flick out from the middle, I think. Here we go. And then that little bit just on the outside of the eye, where I've done those two lines. Just going to colour that in red. Um, pretty much, there you have it. Perfect koi fish. And that. Like I said before, you know, at this point you can sort of uh, do like waves around it. Ideally, if you're going to put waves in, you want to do it beforehand because you want it kind of overlapping in a couple of locations. But if I can find my pencil, I will show you. So you say you have here, just have them sort of curve out. Like a finger sort of shape, a finger at the top, come up here. Curve in the other direction, so you kind of flick out that way. Bring it over the top, go. Look at that on the outside. That around there, you can have like a flower here, flower there. You know, really is however you want to do it. But for now, we'll just do this one like this. Quickly, just going to put a black outline. There you go, black outline done, and there you go, perfect queer fish. What I will do, I'll show you a couple other examples you can do. Uh, different style in different ways. Oops, easy. Bloody hell, dropping everything. Right. Let's see if I can find it in here. Do -do -do. Right. There's another way you could do it. Can get this in this camera, right? So you see, that's like the addition of a flower. You got some mad waves. You don't often see the waves done like this in tattooing. This is just generally the way I like them. And that, uh, the next one, they're kind of a bit more like it. But you see, like here, here, all the scales are blacked in red. I mean, in black, but left that little white line. And at the ends, I filled that in with the orange and yellow. And that they gave it a much darker tone. Sort of, you know, the blacks around the faces. You know, a bit of greens, and that black fading out into the yellow, like a much darker type quail fish. You know, if you're not too confident with colour, you could do that. You know, you could do that without colour. You could do just the black shading, and that would still look awesome. And that uh, you could change it up, and go crazy. It's one of my trademark zombie koi fishes. This one's different shape. See, this one's to see. See, there's no S. It doesn't really curve back because it goes kind of both ways. This one's got like the waves. But you see, like here, the wave overlaps. And that's, that's why I said, when you're sketching it out, if you want to do waves, you want to do that beforehand, because you're colouring that bit, you can't put the wave in afterwards. And that. Uh, a lot of nice ways of doing like here, well, it doesn't look nice because it's a zombie one, but if you've got lines coming off, like waves, like water waves, colour that in black or blue, like, you know, like water's coming out of the mouth sort of thing, always looks pretty neat. You know, like a wave going over the top, and just like, put like a grey tone over the top, so it's slightly darker. Makes the koi fish look like it's underneath the water, you know, add some uh, cherry blossoms in. Very simple, easy to do. Just like the same flower, five times round. 
little corner bit, circle in the middle, flicks out, boom. No, but yeah, that is my koi fish tutorial. You know, if you like it, click like, uh, subscribe to see more, and uh, remember, if you want a chance at a shout out, you know, subscribe, leave a comment, send me a message, or leave a video response of one of your videos in the comments below. And that because next video I do I will be doing a shout out for four people you know it's a perfect way to get your your work shown your video shown get you more subscribers more views and that's so yeah keep an eye for that to enter like I said subscribe video response comment or message right. hope you enjoyed it people see you next time